Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day. Good day for my Korean learners. I am very sorry for this um, little late video here. I was supposed to make it yesterday, but here it goes. So as usual, I'm going to do the same thing I did with Chinese and Japanese, a little review and advice on the uh, beginning stages and making that transition. So these are all the Korean resources that I have for now. Very, very useful resources. All right. And I'm not going to really do it in this video, but um, if you if you are interested in a particular book review, if it's not on my channel, let me know, and I'll make a video and go through it and just to show you how it's laid out and whatnot. Okay? So, let's get it started. So, as usual, we all know that the beginning stage is very important. Why? Because we, we need to know what to start with. We need to know uh, what are the best resources to use at the beginning. And what re, re, what resources are best for me to make this transition over to other resources? So that's what we're going to talk about here today. All right. So I want to start with. Let's see. Where am I going to start? Mm, 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 mm. All right. So as you can see over there, my course, my FLR course. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit about that first, and just go in order. Now, as I mentioned before in the other videos, I, I would recommend beginners to start with that course. Now, sure, there are a lot of other beginner courses. Like As you can see, Hippocrane is a beginner's course. Spoken World is a beginner's course. Um, you have Integrated Korean. Um, what else? Teach Yourself. These are all beginning courses. So, yeah, there are other beginning courses out there that you can start with. But what makes my course special it makes it unique from others is the fact that I actually touch on stuff that is relevant especially for those who are willing to get out there and start speaking with the natives right away something that I really uh, highly encourage if you want to stay motivated okay so my course I in the first level I introduce the questions and answers um, I provide you with keywords um, the audio comes with it all that good stuff and then I have an instructional video where I'll show you how you need to study, how you need to uh, put sentences together, like basically how, what you need to do while working through the course. Okay? So that is what makes my course unique. I'm not saying that my course is better than other courses because everyone's course is different. Okay? Every, everyone has different methods. Um, that's, just, that's just what makes my course unique from other courses. Now, as usual, I always recommend other uh, resources to use I always do that because they're you know like for example begin um, hippocrine course they have something that I don't have to offer in my course you know and you will find that in a lot of other courses so I'm always open to other methods and whatnot and I will recommend others to use other courses while working through my own course all right so I recommend people to use FLR course now if you're the type of person, you know, you say, well, I don't have, you know, I'm not really interested in trying to speak with natives right away. I'd rather just wait a long period of time, a year, whatever, before I start speaking. Then, hey, you can you can turn to another course. You can use something like um, uh, Hippocrane, Hippocrane course, Living Language Korean, um, Spoken World, Teach Yourself, and that's fine. Okay, that's that's that's. That's okay. Now, um, what was I about to say here? Okay, so uh, the FLR course, and then I will um, always recommend a course like Oxymill to use while working. Let's say once you purchase the FLR course and you want to work for something else, which I will highly recommend. Um, I will. I normally recommend using Oxymill just because of the simple fact that it's the approach is similar to mine, like it's more natural. There's really no grammar at the beginning stage, okay? So, um, Asimil takes you through a bunch of dialogues and it, you learn things intuitively, which is a natural approach. So, that's why I recommend an Asimil while working through this FLR course. Another uh, another uh, resource is Link, uh, Mr. Kaufman's website. His approach is similar. 
he doesn't focus too much on grammar. He likes to learn things in, intuitively. And um, that's why I always recommend his site. Okay? So um, I will include his, his, his uh, site, the link to his site, in the description area for this video. But FLR, Ossimil, link. Uh, I don't know. I don't know of any other courses that has an intuitive approach, um, but uh, those are the ones I would recommend. Now, the the thing, is, the see, the Asimil Korean. I know they have one. I've been hearing a lot of bad things about it. Um, I normally don't like to listen to others in, until I get my um, own my own hands on the course and and go through it myself. But I believe the approach is the same. The only problem is I don't think they have an English version. I don't think they do. Um, if they do, then um, you can go check it out over on the website. I'll provide a link to that to that place as well. So, um, yep. So, Asimil FLR link, and uh, again, Hippocrane. Now, the reason why I will recommend some people may ask, well, why do you recommend using other courses while working through your own course? Well, because there are things, like I said, there are things offered in these other courses, for example, um, dialogues. Now, in my level two, they're all dialogues. That they're, in level two, they're pretty much dialogues like uh, Asimil, pretty much like Link Asimil. Only difference is I have an instructional video where I show you a method on how you need to um, go through those dialogues, okay, practicing like the constructions and whatnot, okay? So... Um, while you're working through the FLR course, it's always good to listen to something like it has audios you can listen to over and over to practice your pronunciation accent. It's always good. And I, on the instructional video, I show you, I tell you like how how long, how many days, or whatever you're supposed to, or you you should be working through this material. All right, that's why I always recommend it. Even myself, I'm using my own course for check. But see, I'm using other courses. You see, it's always good to work through other courses. So, Hippocrane will be a good a good one to use at the same time because Hippocrane has dialogues as well. Um, spoken world, same deal. This will probably be on the same level as Hippocrane and Teach Yourself. They all all of these courses they have dialogues. They have a um, they have a culture section. They give you culture notes. Then they give you um, grammar exercises. They explain grammar, which is something that you don't really want to get to get into at the beginning. But if you can't find, if you don't use Link or you don't use Oxymil, then you won't have a choice. So what you will have to do is, let's say, if you decide to use Hippocrane, you will have to use a uh, program. You have to use a program. What's the name of that program? Um, oh man. I can't remember the name of that program, but it, you 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 edit the audio. You have to cut up the audio and just take out the dialogue itself, and then put it in your MP3 player and just listen to it over and over. Just do the pretty much the same thing Asimil would do. They just go straight to the dialogue. They have exercises which you won't be able to you know go through in the Hippocrane course, but it's, that's okay as long as you have the um, the dialogues. So. With with Hippocrane, Living Language, Spoken World, um, Teach Yourself, any of these type of courses um, that has the grammar introduction, the grammar section, and the culture notes, and you want dial, you want to get straight to the dialogue, you want to have to cut it up. You want to have to cut it up. I can't remember the name of the program, but um, once it comes comes to mind, I'll um, post it in the video. So. That's beginner material. So, uh, let's see here. The next thing, you want to get yourself a dictionary. It's always good to get a dictionary. You probably won't really use it that much at the beginning stages, but why not get a dictionary, you know? And this dictionary I've had for a very long time. I'm sure there are some better ones out there, but this one has been pretty helpful. Yep, as you can see, I had it for a long, long time. So it's a good idea to get a dictionary. Then phrase books. Phrase books are also really good. Now, I'm going to have to make a video um, showing people how to utilize phrase books. I've been getting a lot of requests, so I'll probably make that video sometime this week and make it as a response to this video 
show you guys how to use um, phrase books. Here's another phrase book. But the good thing about this phrase book is the fact that it has audio. It has audio. I totally forgot about language last 30. Wow. I just made a review on the Oxymill um, phrase book. Anyway, so those are your phrase books. All right. Okay, moving over. So, by the time you finish, let's say you get you you got the FLR course, you're working with FLR course and let's say spoken world. By the time you finish those two courses, you should be you you should you should you should hit at least an intermediate level. You should. Okay. And if you don't hit an intermediate level, it's going to be low intermediate, but it's going to be up there. And once you get to that point, then you want to start working from intermediate material. Okay, so the integrated Korean courses are really good. Um, I got turned on to these courses when I was still taking courses at the Ohio State University. They have a really good program for Korean, and these are the courses they use. So they have a lot of levels for the integrated Korean courses. They have this is beginning two. I don't have beginning one. They have beginning one, beginning two, intermediate one here, intermediate two, then they have advanced one, advanced two, then they have high advanced one, and then high advanced two. So once you get to this intermediate level, I would say start, you can either, you have several options. You can either get, get an integrated Korean course, start with intermediate one, okay? Get an intermediate college Korean, which is a, an excellent course. Modern Korean and intermediate reader, okay. Either you can either of those courses you should you should get because it's all it starts from intermediate and it will take you to um, at least an upper intermediate to a low advanced, okay. So this here this is a grammar book, and of course as I always say once you reach at least an intermediate level it then that time you can start really getting into grammar start kind of looking at grammar see how things are being constructed and whatnot and this will be a, an ideal course to get now there's another um, another Korean grammar course I don't have it I have it on the uh, PDF um, I'm gonna have to look through my files I'll, I'll post that in the description as well so this is all intermediate material alright now as I said before I'm the type of learner I'm the type of learner that likes to work through several resources at the same time okay so, for example, if I was working through, you know, um, some intermediate material, I'll be working through this. I'll be using intermediate college Korean. I'll more than likely be using this, this, and working through this grammar book, and even this. I will use all these courses at the same time. Why? Because a lot of the stuff that you may see, like, for example, in intermediate college Korean, you may see come up in the modern Korean intermediate reader. You may see come up in Intermediate 1 Integrated Korean course. That's what I like to do. Some people think it's a waste of time to each his own. But, hey, that's how I do it, and I enjoy doing it. But if, you, if you're the type of person who likes to just work from one course, then I say you can't go wrong with working from this Intermediate College Korean course. The content in this course is amazing. It's amazing. And it ha on top of that, it has audio, but you have to get it from all, all, online. Okay. Oh, something happened for a minute. I got cut off. Okay, 13 minutes, 14 minutes. All right, I don't know what that was, but yeah. Hope you guys heard what I just said. Basically, what I just said was um, if you're the type of learner who likes to go through one course at a time, I will say you can't go wrong going through the intermediate college Korean course just because of the fact that the, the content is so good the, the material is so so good not only that it has audio but you have to get it on you have to get it from online um, I will post the link to that website where you can get this audio as well alright so intermediate college Korean modern Korean inter intermediate reader and then you have the grammar book and then you have the integrated Korean course you guys make the choice but once again, you don't have to purchase all these courses. You don't have to. You know, I'm not saying that you have to do it. I'm just, I'm just giving you some recommendations and telling you how I, w how my approach is, how, what I would normally do if I was working through 
certain courses. All right. And then, of course, after you get through this intermediate college Korean course, then you probably want to find some more advanced materials such as, hey, the integrated Korean. They have high advance. They have high advance one, high advance two. They have advance one, advance two. I would probably start with advance one and then work my way through those all the way to the high advance course. Okay? And then at the same time, as usual, you want to have interaction with native speakers. That's very, very important. Interaction with native speakers. Make sure you, you're, um, when you reach this level, you're working through some authentic content. Um, watching a lot of Korean shows or whatever it is, but make sure you have contact with the with the people, you know, because that will, act, believe it or not, that will also take you to a higher level. All right? So um, other than that, what else? What else do I need to mention here? There was something else I wanted to say. Oh man, not again. I never had these this problem before with my Lutzy cam. It seems to keep saying something might be being out of range. I guess I gotta hold my phone here. I hope it didn't screw up the video. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this and see if how the quality was. But yeah, like I was saying, um it's very important to make sure you have contact with the native speakers. Very, very, very important. Okay. Because that will take you to another level as well. But um, I think we're good. Oh, I forgot to go. Oh, these courses here. Well, not courses, but... Okay, these, you see, Integrated Korean Workbook. These are basically workbooks to the Integrated Korean courses. A lot of people like to go through exercises, so you may fancy these. But that's what these are for. Okay. Now, book two is good too for beginners. It's basically it's like a it's a phrase book, basically phrase book with um you have the characters and of course you need the audio. All right. So there are so many resources out there. I have a lot of them, and you know, um, I would just say. There, there is no such thing as a useless resource. You may find something useful about the resource. You never know, just you know, until you try it. But um, that's my review for this Korean material. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for viewing and um, look forward to any comments or any questions. Happy language learning.